Father, thank you once again for another opportunity to come together and to fellowship with one another and to fellowship with you and to study your word. We just love your word. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you that you've empowered us to live a victorious life. And as we study your word tonight, we thank you for revelation knowledge flowing freely, unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic or demonic spirit. We thank you, Father, that we decrease and you increase. All of you and none of us anoint our ears to hear, our hearts to receive, and our spirit to contain your word. And Father, I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords all that you'd have me to say to these your sheep. And Father, we'll be ever so mindful to always give you the praise and always give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name and everyone in agreement say amen. amen. All right. We're talking about what it means to be spiritually alive and spiritually dead. And we said last week that from the beginning, man was created spiritually alive to God. And in Genesis chapter 1, we read verses 26 through 28, which we're going to do again tonight. If you have it, say, I have it. That's good, because if you couldn't find Genesis, then we need to talk after service, you know what I mean? <laughs> it says, verse 26 says, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness let them have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth you know we're supposed to have authority over snakes for those that are afraid of snakes you should have authority over them we're supposed to have authority over them amen you respect them but you're supposed to have authority over them <laughs> <laughs> Verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them. The first thing that God did for man was the blessing. And that blessing that he bestowed on man, Jesus has brought back to us. We are blessed. Amen. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it have dominion over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth i like that in verse 28 because it shows that with the blessing on our lives we have dominion we have authority that's what brings us authority is that blessing that's on our lives amen we have authority you have authority over debt you have authority over sickness See, religion don't want you to hear that. Religion says, how can I have authority over sickness? I can't stop sickness from coming. You can stop it from overcoming. You don't have to let it overtake you. Amen. By his, Jesus paid the price for us to live a healthy life. The best, now remember, salvation is, the purpose of salvation is for us to receive God's best. God's best is not that you get well, but God's best best is that you live a healthy life not get sick that's God's best you don't God God I mean it's, it's good to receive healing if you if, if you come or I mean, if, if sickness is on you but we need to get to a place where we walk and live in divine health we don't let sickness overtake us at all amen it's time to stop catching colds <laughs> let, me, let me let me move on the reason why most people have colds, because they're out there trying to catch them. It's time for me to get a cold this year. You're catching them. Let that thing go on by you, man. <laughs> all right. Now, on your syllabus, it says, now, first of all, I want you to notice that God said, let us make man in our image. When God said our, this is in reference to the Trinity. The Trinity or the triune God is the three in one God. It is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all of whom are one God. And we can find that in 1 John 5 and 7. Now, the next thing that I want, want you to notice is that God created man in his image. How awesome is that? The God of the universe created us in his image. God created many things. He created animals. He created plant life. But he chose to create us, man, in his image. 
Wow. I don't know about you, but that's, I mean, that's overwhelming to me. That a, that a, 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 a almighty, the all sovereign, the all knowing, the all powerful God created man in his image. Thank you, Dad. Now, what does it mean to be created in God's image? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> the traditional view of that is that God's image is certain moral, ethical, and, and intellectual abilities referring to man having God's attributes or his characteristics. That's the traditional view of that, okay? Uh, a more modern view based on Hebrew grammar and on the knowledge of the ancient of, of, of the ancient Middle East interprets this phrase of let us make man in our image as let us make man as our image. That's how they interpret that, okay? This refers to man being a representative of God. In ancient times, an emperor might command statues of himself to be placed in remote parts of his empire. These statues were symbols that represented the emperor declaring that the areas were, were under his power and reign. Wherever the statues of him was placed, that showed the people that he was the authority in that area. Okay? Well, the modern view says that God placed mankind as living symbols of himself on earth to represent his reign. That's why we were placed here to represent God's reign, okay? Now, this particular view fits well with God's command to man to reign over all that he has created. All right, we see that in verses 26 and 28. Now, I want to put it on record, this is me talking, that I agree with both interpretations, but I don't think that they are complete interpretations. I believe that we possess more and intellectual abilities of God, and I believe that God put man on earth to represent him and to reign for him. However, I also take this verse literally. I believe that man was created in God's likeness to look like God on the inside. I don't, it ain't just, I don't think we just limited to having God's characteristics or just limited to being representatives of God. I think we literally look like God on the inside. God is a spirit. And we can see that in John 4, 24, where it says that we are to worship him in spirit and truth, for God is a spirit, okay? And God created man a living spirit with flesh. On the inside, man's spirit looked like God. When God created man, he breathed his spirit into man, and man became a living being. Let's go to Genesis chapter 2. In verse 7. Hallelujah. I turned my page from it. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. And if you have it, say I have it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of all of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. God breathed into man his spirit. He breathed who he was into man. Now, remember last week, I talked, to, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but we talked about uh, the adoption in the Bible is different than the world adoption because God put his seed in us. All right. When, and it's through Jesus Christ that we receive that seed. When God did that, he restored us back to where we was. He, he restored us back to where he created Adam. See, Adam had the Holy Spirit in him. Because that was what God breathed in him, the spirit of life. But when he disobeyed, he, he lost that connection with God. His spirit became dead to God. But through Jesus Christ, we are reconnected back to God through his spirit. Because you can't be connected to God without his spirit being in you. Amen. All right. Back on the syllabus. It says, although God created light with a word, because he spoke light into existence, he created man by fashioning a body out of mud and clay, transforming the clay into a physical person, and then breathing life 
into the physical body that he had made from the ground. The term breath of life describes the infusion of the human spirit with its moral, intellectual, intellectual and, and rational and spiritual capacities. And when I say human spirit, I just, mean, I, I just mean that we became human beings. Okay? The breath of life is God's spirit of life that caused us to become living beings. The Amplified Bible for uh, Genesis 2 and 7 it reads, then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath or spirit of life and man became a living being. That's awesome. He, think about this. Man was created and, 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 and was made alive from the breath of God. Think, God just took man and he didn't do no other creature like that but man. He breathed himself into man. That's how much God loves us. That's how much God cares about us. And his love for us hasn't changed because don't think he didn't know Adam was going to mess up because in Genesis 3.15 is the, is the first sign or the first uh, mention of God preparing Jesus to come to the earth. So he had a plan, and the reason why he had that plan in place, because he loved us. Because he could have just destroyed man and just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be done with it. I ain't going to worry about it no more. But he loved us. And, 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 and what's so awesome is that he didn't want robots. He didn't want us to be ordered to love him or to fellowship with him. He wanted us to willingly love him and fellowship with him he gives us a free will we can choose to do it he wants you to choose to love him you know people say uh you know i need somebody to talk to and we do need flesh people in the flesh every now and then but you always got god you can talk to god anytime you want to and he never gets tired you know you can call him up we read the scripture a few, uh, a few weeks ago in Psalm 62 and 8 where it says that we're to pour our heart out to God. When you are overwhelmed with something, instead of getting on the phone, go to the throne and just pour your heart out to God and talk to God. Amen? God loves us. All right. Back to the syllabus. It says, God showed tender care and intimate concern in the way that he shaped man and breathed into him the spirit of life. Now the physical body is a lifeless shell that could not survive without the spirit of life that God breathed into him. The, our physical body cannot survive without the spirit. Our spirit. Our spirit can live without the physical body, but our physical body cannot live without the spirit because the spirit is who we are. That's why I believe that we look like God because God is a spirit and we are spirits. We are spirits. We are a spirit. We possess a soul and we live in a body. That's how it goes. You are a spirit. You possess a soul, which is your mind, your will, and your emotions, and you live in a body. And what the body is, it's an earth suit so that you can survive here on earth and contact one another and deal with the natural. You need this earth suit to survive. Like if we went out of space, we need a space suit to survive in outer space. Amen? Praise Jesus. Man is a spirit, like I said, and he has a soul and lives in a body. Now, like I said earlier, I believe that man was created to look like God. When God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, I believe God literally meant that he would make man to be like him, to represent him, and to look like him in all aspects. We even have the power. The reason, you know, Jesus even confirmed what I believe because he's, he's given us the power to do the same thing that God did. Oh, I know that shook some religious folks there, didn't it? John 14 and 12, Jesus said, The things that I do, so shall you do, but even more. Just, and, and what did Jesus do? He raised the dead. When he needed money, he commanded money to come through the fish's mouth. 
I'm all I'm always looking at dogs and stuff. Cause if I see a bag in a dog mouth, I might tackle that dog. Cause there might be some money in that dog in, in that bag. So that's why you can't be afraid of dogs. See, if you're afraid of dogs, he may be walking by with hundred thousand dollars in the bag and you running from it. I'm tackling. He he gonna be running from me. Come here, give me that bag. Let me see what. <laughs> Chicken. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> well, you you know the chicken story, don't you? That's what you saying. <laughs> man was back on the syllabus. Man was created a living being capable of embodying God's attributes, his character. Isn't that awesome? He made us where we're able to embody his characteristics. That's what the fruit of the spirit is. That's his characteristics. The fruit of the spirit is God's characteristic. And we can embody them. We have them in us. Wow. And who look like God in his spirit. Now, this is a good place to point out that our life and worth comes from God. There are many who boast of their achievements and abilities as though they were the originator of their own strength. You got people bra- I'm a self-made man. I'm a self-made me. There's no self-made man. There's no self-made millionaire. Everybody that's in place is in place because of God. All God has to do is say no more breath. And all of us will drop. We say the alarm clock woke me up. No, God woke you up. If the alarm clock will wake you up, all you had to do was take it out there to the graveyard and everybody get up. God woke you up. Every, you don't need an alarm. You can get to a place where you don't need an alarm clock. All you do is tell God what time you want to get up, and he'll wake you up. I even have used God as a snooze button. because he is, I told him what time I wanted to get up. I said, Lord, 15 more minutes. Do you know 15 more minutes you woke me up? But I have to be mindful of that because sometimes I can sleep past that. <laughs> he been trying to wake me up. And I'm, wait a minute, Lord, just two a couple of moments. <laughs> My point is, we can't do anything without God. All right? Now, on the flip side of that, there are others who feel worthless because their abilities do not stand out. And God is not concerned with our abilities. He's concerned with our availability. He takes the things that are foolish in the world to confound the wise. You don't need an education. Peter and John didn't have an education. I think it's Acts 4.13 where it says they didn't have an education, but the people knew that they had been with God. See, they didn't have, they didn't go to seminary, a cemetery, but they went to (laughs) God-terry. They, they, they went to neology. They didn't study theology. They went to neology they pray they 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 had a personal relationship with god because it see your abilities that you have actually come from god and the abilities that men have in the world to be successful was was originally given to men for the benefit of the kingdom but we we let greed and all these other things come in and we start taking the gifts that god has given us and and, and, and selling them to the world. But the, there's your ability. If you don't, if you don't see, uh, you th- don't, don't, don't see any uh, personal skills that you have, just surrender to God. Surrender to God, and he'll use you mightily. He took one man out of a nut ward in 1977, I think it was, and and he has a, 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 a worldwide ministry. Jack, Jack Myers was, uh, he was Jack Myers' pastor for a long time. I can't think of his name, Brother Chuck. You know what I'm trying to, uh, was, who was Jack Myers' pastor before Bill Wilson? Yeah, uh, he was in a nut war. And God pulled him out of a nut war. Wow. Rob Thompson. Rob Thompson. And pulled him out of a nut war in 1977. And now he has a worldwide ministry. Somebody probably walk by him and, and, and say well he'll never amount to nothing see it doesn't your abilities doesn't matter because God just wants your availability he wants you to be available to be used by him amen, amen. all right the reality is that our worth does not come from our achievements and abilities but from God who gives us the gift of life 
If you want to be success in anything or everything that you do, just surrender to God. And I'm going to tell you, I said this Sunday when I was doing the tithe, most problems that we have as Christians is either sickness or finances, okay? When you surrender to God and recognize who you are and whose you are, you get to a place where you walk in divine hell. You get to a place where when the money is needed, even though it may not be in your check account, it shows up. When it's not be in your checking account, it shows up. I'm telling you, God, God when, you are, when you make yourself available to be used by God, he makes sure that you have everything you need. You know who's a great example of that is Elijah. When he had to go by the brook Sherith, Kareth, that's the, how you pronounce it. Well, when he, when, when he went by the brook, <laughs> now y'all figure out which, what the name of it is. <laughs> he had the ravens to feed him. Birds brought him food. A grown, now, 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 now see, we just overlooked that, but I, I was thinking about that one day. We talking about a grown man. That bird couldn't bring just a little mouthful of food. He had to bring something to fill this man up. A bunch of food. They had to bring a bunch of food because Elijah was a full grown man. And, and, and don't think that just like we are today, we're, we're, we have strong appetites. Elijah probably had a strong appetite. See, see, we got cars. They had to walk where they went and walking stirs up appetite. You get hungry. So he had to, God provided for him through the birds. How, he provided tax money for Peter through fish. When you are surrendered to God, I don't care what the need is, when you stay right there, God will have somebody in place to provide for. His favor is going to be there. This is the kind of God we serve. He loves us, and he wants us to be successful as long as we keep our focus on him. Don't let, once you start, see, that's one thing I love about God, because he will pull the curtains off of those that, once they get in a, 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 a high position and money coming in and they turn away from God, he pulls the cover off. You know why? Because he can't have anyone represent him in the wrong way. That's why in churches and ministries, uh, like Pastor Chuck, he sets rules when you licensed by the church or if you're a leader in the church. There's certain rules and standards that, 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 that we have to abide by because we represent FICC wherever we go wherever we go we represent FICC so you can't be acting any kind of way and then telling people well I go to FICC and you puffing on a joint and talking about you a leader they say well what kind of, well, what kind of leader this is are you out there sleeping around what kind of leader this is what kind of church this is and, if you, and I'm going to tell you something if you're doing these things if you're doing these things and people that you're doing them with come into church and see you in leadership position oh boy they ain't gonna stay because they say well you know this here I don't know what's cause I know that person right there they, they was out drinking and partying with me last night and now they leading the congregation what's going on well God ain't gonna have us representing him any kind of way I'm not talking about going to heaven I'm talking about being a representative of God that's a difference amen and I love you but I got to tell the truth. <laughs> shame the devil. They used to say, tell the truth and shame the devil. All right, we'll start a little bit on this. The next thing that we're going to talk about is the origin of spiritual death and the origin of spiritual life. And we're going to start with the origin of spiritual death. The origin of spiritual death is Adam's disobedience. A lot of times... I've heard people say, Adam and Eve caused us to fall, but I'm going to tell you who caused us to fall, Adam. Adam was disobedient, Eve was deceived. Adam was put in authority, he just followed, he just submitted to the wrong authority. He submitted to Eve's influence instead of staying with God's influence. It was through, because the Bible says, and we're gonna probably, I don't know if we're going to get to it tonight, but the Bible says in Romans 5 and 12, it's through one man that sin and death entered the world and that's Adam it was through his disobedience 
through Adam's disobedience, sin entered the world, and sin brought with it death, which includes physical death and spiritual death. That's when physical death, the physical body, started to die is when Adam disobeyed. Do you know that man was originally created to live forever? The body was designed to replenish itself. The body, even now, when you get hurt or cut yourself, the body automatically starts to try to heal itself. Because we was, but since the fall of Adam, look at the years and the time frame that has has failed. So we're not as uh, our body is not as, as strong. The physical body is not as, as strong as strong as it was when Adam then walked this earth. You understand what I'm saying? It the 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 fall of the earth has affected us more now than it did doing Methuselah and all of them. Because Methuselah lived to be 969. You know, 969 years. I I've heard people say, if I make it to 100, I'll be happy. I don't want to go no no further than 100. You'd have never lived back then. 969. That's a long time. That's why I say, I'm going to be here till Jesus comes. If I'm 300 walking around here, I'm going to be here till Jesus comes. I'm going through the, brother, brother Chuck called it what the, the, the upper taker, not the under, and, and the undertaker. I'm going through the upper taker. I'm not going through the undertaker. I'm going through the upper taker. I'm going to be raptured up out of here at 300 if I have to be. But I believe Jesus is going to come back way way before then we living in the last days now that's why it's so important that we surrender to God that's why it's so important that we go out and be godly witnesses it's important for you and I to get our lives in line so that we can be a representative of God I'm going to close with this it's, a, it's one lady that we minister to and uh, she was affiliated with this pastor before we started ministering to her and she was telling me the other night that, you know, he doesn't, now this pastor has been married six times. <laughs> and now he just got married. He haven't been married a, a year yet, and they done separated, okay? And this one friend of hers has been put out of her house or getting put out of her house. So this pastor is going to allow her to live with him. But they're not going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. They're just going to live. He just helping her out. Well, first off, that's wrong. Because that's, the Bible says abstain from the appearance of evil. So that's not a good environment. Secondly, she said, secondly, she said that he, 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 she done seen him selling drugs. Pastor now. But preaching not to do it, preaching holiness, and what she told me, I just talked to her last night, night before last. She said he, he's starting a church in his house, and he's invited her. She said there is no way. There's no way I'm going to be part of that congregation. She said he preached one thing and lived another way. You see, that's why we got to be right. Because people watch you. Don't think people are not watching you. And if you want to go out and be a witness for Christ, you better be living the life. That's more effective to them than what you say. When we're living correctly, they pay more attention to that. Peter even told us that in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 1, when he talked about the wives, how to win the husband over who, who's not serving the word. Well, that, who's not doing the word, well, that applies to all, every, everybody. If you want to win a person over, live the life in front of them. Don't let the enemy uh, steal your witness. Nothing out there is worth your witness. Proverbs 22 and 1 says a good name is better than silver and gold. Amen? Praise God. Father, thank you once again for your word. Thank you that your word, Father, is making a mark in our lives that cannot be erased. We thank you, Father, that each and every day we're growing and developing in our relationship with you. We're drawing nearer to you, and you are drawing nearer to us, James 4 and 8. And we thank you, Father. Father, I thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. I thank you for your blessing that's on their lives. I thank you, Father, that every need has already been provided for. And I thank you for revealing to those that don't understand or don't know that it's already done. I thank you for opening their eyes of understanding, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.